Welcome back to Correct Opinions, episode 33. Donald Trump Jr. Uh, stole my segment. Did you see that? They're doing a triggered segment. I don't know. Um, currently, my people are talking to the White House. We're getting it squared away. That's not true. Uh, April 29th. Thanks for coming on back. And I got my own... S- We're doing a special trigger segment today to get back at people. I might start a little dating site here on Correct Opinions. Stay tuned. Um, and much more. Roll music. Correct Opinions. Correct Opinions. I don't know if you saw Donald Trump Jr. This Several of y'all sent me this. Thank you for alerting me. Because uh, I was very upset when I saw this. I was very... Not really, but... Uh, I saw Donald Trump's Facebook. They see Team Trump uh, join team, team Trump online for Triggered with Donald Trump Jr. So I don't know. I don't know what to think of that. I don't know what to think that. That definitely has me a little bit. Also, I was just I just ran over to get my coffee to come back and sit down here. I'm out of breath. Um, unfortunately. That doesn't make me fearful I have the virus because uh, I've always been out of breath. So pros and cons there. Like, Trey, you're breathing, you're breathing heavy from having a conversation? That's something to be worried about. I, yeah, it w- I've been worried about it for years prior to this. So <sighs> we're good. So I'm going to do my own segment of <laughs> Triggered. Triggered. Donald Trump stole my stuff. And enough challenges. You know, uh, push up challenge. Uh, share your first photo challenge. Share the first photo of your girlfriend challenge. Share your wedding photos challenge, which, from, you know, that one's a little toned up. Uh, I guess, you know, I'm especially aware of it because I having a wedding postponed. But like, think, I, we all know people's weddings are postponed. You know, I've like, I now have like 93 weddings to go to this fall, fingers crossed, because however many got canceled this year. And people are like, oh, oh, thanks for the new save the date of your postponed wedding. That's got to suck. Let's do a challenge where we share our perfect wedding that didn't have a virus involved. (laughs) Tag your three besties. We're. Shut up. Enough of the challenges the the uh the mute challenge tag all the people you follow but you muted <laughs> let's do that one you guys you i know some of you if you didn't know you can mute people on instagram hopefully you did because i have some people muted you know those people i only have one or two muted to be honest i'm still a fan of just the strict unfollow i know you in person i see you often I just unfollow you I because I kind of want you to know that you're doing something that I'm just not. When I see people that know me who don't follow me, especially, you know, I'm like doing it for a living, right? I almost gain a little respect. I'm like, wow, you, you just straight up are like, yeah, I know Trey. And I know he even like is really trying on this Instagram thing, but I'm still, it's just not my thing. I'm not going to follow him. That's fine. That's what it's for. So I have people I know. I never, I unfollowed my cousin one time. Have you ever encountered those people that are like, what? You unfollow me, and it's like, whoa, whoa! How did this happen? What? I don't know. I, I, let me follow you back. We've all done that. It's never been true. How do you accident? I accidentally clicked these exa- these three buttons, you know, in succession, and next thing I know, I wasn't following you. Let me follow you back. Or when you, when you have to follow them back, and it's a request, so they have to like accept the invite. Like, why? Are, Hey, you're my like own cousin and you're not following me. I, t- I don't know what happened. It wasn't, it wasn't because you've been sharing wedding photos for 13 months. It wasn't because of that. It's because I just accidentally pressed the wrong buttons all in a row. <sighs> Sorry. No, no, it's not. It's not because you got a new dog and you posted about it six times a day. And I just like, uh, after three days, I was like, unfollow that's not what happened that's just a coincidence that Radford you got the dog that you posted about every every hour on the hour i unfollowed you that's a coincidence i had a buddy uh you know 
someone sent me this, these braggy, this gets me triggered. The, the people who brag about their significant others or their parents or something like, uh, someone, someone sent me this. It's like a photo of, you know, Jerry posted past couple of days. I redid our laundry room, new paint and a new shelf. And then the wife shares it. She's like new laundry room. My husband's better than your husband. It's like, okay, you're coming at us a little hostile there. Jennifer, he just, he, he painted your walls. My husband's better than yours. Okay. Okay. We're doing fine over here. Or I, I saw a buddy of mine. I follow. He shared like he had, you know, they had some of their quarantine meal. He, sh- he reshared her meal and said, best cook around. And the meal, it was very like new age girl. It was just like beets and apples. He's like, my girl's a better kick than see my girl in the kitchen. She's a better cook than your girl. She cut up an apple. You're having apples for dinner? You know what happened the last time a woman gave a guy an apple? You ever think about that? Get off my Instagram story, man. You know, I don't need you bragging about your girl making you apples. Apple, this this you know, a uh, little cute little boy. He shot it. They, this was sent to me. Cute little boy. I guess went hunting. They got a nice turkey. My grandson's better than your grandson. My seven year old could kill animals better than yours. He's better than yours. You know, you got little boys killing turkeys. Grown women making apples for dinner. I don't know what's going on. I hunting is something I've never done, and not because like I I don't care if you hunt. I just don't. I'd rather just stay. There's no air conditioning when you're hunting. You know, I'm kind of more. That's my vibe. I had a, I had a talk with Katie the other day about how when we got together with family, often they're like all the girls want to like go get their nails done, and all the guys will like stay home and talk sports. I'm like, can I come with? Can I come with you, girls? I don't. That's kind of that's where I'm at. Which I don't know what that says about me. But like. I don't know. I don't know how to like, I like sports. I don't know if I can keep up with their sports talk. I'm going to, I'm going to really do, I'm going to flourish a little more in the salon. I just am. I got my first pedicure, dude. If you get pedicures, God, oh man, that might be one of the first things I do post virus. My first pedicure, I got it at Walmart. Easy lady. I didn't know yet. And honestly, it was fine. I've been to like the, the real salons versus Walmart. Same. Um, and what's cool is the, you know, these women doing the salon stuff, they're seeing, they see men rarely, I think. So every time me, I've, I've gone with a couple of buddies, they like kind of flirt with us. So it's like a, it's a confidence boost all around. You get the aesthetic, your feet are looking nice. They're smelling nice. Your confidence goes up mentally, emotionally. Cause they're like, Oh, you're single. I'm like, Oh, I'm not my buddy is while she's just perfecting his nasty toes. I mean, you have to, yeah, find you a woman who, you know, I'm, I'm about to marry a woman. If I show her too much of my feet, she's like, okay, could you put the socks back on? Because that's disgusting. You have a woman. She's, she's in my buddy's nasty, stinky, hairy feet. And she's still flirting with him. That's a girl you need to, there's something there. There's something there. Mm, pedicures. My husband's better than your husband. (laughs) My husband literally like the light bulb went out and he fixed it. So guess what he gets? Apples for dinner. What a good boy. I want to see your apples for dinner, dog. Sheesh. And that's got me. You've been watching The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan doc? Okay, I am recording. I do that sometimes where I talk for 15 minutes by myself and I never press record. I also do that a lot where I'm not even in the podcast studio. I'm just talking to myself, but that's why this podcast is good for me. I, the last dance, the Michael Jordan documentary, I'm sure all of you are aware of it. Maybe you've seen it, but I always get a little triggered, annoyed when I watch these like famous people documentaries. Cause they, they try to put them above us which I guess they are in some regard, but it, it's, 
I wish someone would be like, yeah, Michael Jordan's the greatest ever because, well, there's maybe been six people who are six six and can and have a fifty inch vertical and had the resources to like play basketball growing up. That's probably why. What can we just I just want one random it's be just me, like Trey. A random insta guy on Instagram. Yeah, I think he's the best ever just because well he could jump really high and most people can't. Along with all the other things that just kinda it just just keep a re they're they try to prop it up like he he was so competitive, which I I acknowledge he was, but you know like so am I. I know a lot of like I know buddies we we get in like near fist fights playing Settlers of Catan, a board game. Like I'm competitive. I just I just could never touch the rim. So that I mean, if you I know some you you I played intramurals with a few guys in college. You know I, they would. They would. I know a guy who collapsed his lung making a diving catch in an intramural football game. That guy is competitive, but he was five four. So that, you give him Michael Jordan's frame, he's on the documentary. Whoa! Congrats to Bill Franklin. I don't know Bill Franklin. Who's that? You know, I. Or he's like his dad just really pushed him. Yeah, my dad pushed me, but I kept. When he pushed me, I'd be like, I'm just, can I, my buddy is, can I go to a party, dad? He's like, son, we're not, what do you mean a party? I'm like, not my, an Xbox live party? My buddy's hosting it. I have like five friends in there. No, none of us talk to girls. Okay. And, uh, can I go to a party, son? I want you to run around with girls drinking. An Xbox live party. It's all dudes and monster energy drinks. It's just, I'd, you know who, you know who's as competitive as Michael Jordan? Rudy. So yeah, we have a movie about him, about how he sucked so bad that he may manage to maybe get in the game and get a sack, which people debate that. It's just because he was five, six and he had the quickness of... He had, the, he had the quickness of a tortoise, you know, like Rudy, baby, just give up, man. No, I'm never going to give up. And the story is basically how when you, when you're unathletic and you choose to never give up, your ceiling's still pretty low. Yeah. You could maybe walk on and maybe get into a game once is the moral of the story. I, when I watched Rudy, I wasn't like, I, wow, I can do anything. It was more like a gut check of like, yeah, I need to start exploring other options than sports. Don't I? That's what I got out of Rudy. You have some of the, now Rudy's a great story about how you can accomplish whatever you want if you put your mind to it. No, it's a very stark reality check of if this is the cards you're dealt, this is the ceiling. So I mean, I guess you can go achieve that or maybe maybe pivot to maybe maybe do some, do some pivoting to studying real estate or something. That I want that documentary. Jimmy was your normal average. 5'7 white boy from Iowa. His dream was to be an NFL defensive end. But those guys are 6'4, 290 and run faster than your chicken, than your farm chickens. So, Jimmy, well, close to high school, he decided to pivot, get a job at the local bank, and go to his community college to receive his banking degree. Now he has a nice living with a family. Like, oh, wow. That guy's a hero. I don't know. It just gets me triggered. I was on Facebook Marketplace and someone was selling nine DVD bundle. I can't even watch a DVD. You can't even sell. Is that legal anymore? Facebook Marketplace. Hey, I'll keep this on the DL because these are kind of like, you know, black market. I got DVD stock. Cheaper by the dozen. Catch me if you can. Catch me if you can. Cops, I'm selling DVDs. I don't want... <laughs> Why are you selling... It was a, nine, a, a bundle of nine for $20. I'm not buying DVDs. Who's like, oh, cool. Oh my gosh, I've been dying to see Cheaper by the Dozen. No kidding. Do you also have Master of Disguise? I also... 
so Rick, dude, Rick. I got uh I was on the phone yesterday and as the phone call ended, this was with uh family. I was with Katie, she was listening on the conversation and uh it was my sister. She's like, Okay, well, you know, I'll let you go. And so I went, Okay, love you, bye. And just hung up. And Katie was like, What what, what was that? I was like, she, what do you mean? She's like, You have to like that's not how you end a phone call. I'm like, that's how I end a phone call. This this is what I really can't do anymore. I just discovered I don't have time for all of this, okay? When you're on the phone and it's like, all right, well, you know, it was good talking to you. I guess we'll we'll talk to you soon. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, you you have a good week now. All right, yeah, it was good talking to you. I, uh, you have to keep me posted on that thing you told me about. Okay, yeah, all right. Well, we love you. Just have a good week. All right. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. We'll uh, tell Katie hi. All right. We'll talk to you later. Uh, okay. All right. Well, bye bye. Uh, bye. No. All right. Well, it was good talking to you. Yeah. You too. All right. Love you. Bye. Click. I'm out. I just saved 30 seconds. That 30, Nothing was accomplished in that 40 seconds of, uh, all right. You, okay. Go on. Well, it was good catching up with you. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Bye. Love you. Click. I'm out. I've I've got all sorts of time on my hands now. I did that the other day to my sister, and Katie was like, "What? That's not how you do it." I'm like, "That's how I do it." I literally think I, and I know it, my sister listens to these, so she'll understand. I think she was like mid sentence because she tried to do a she tried to be like, "Okay, bye. We'll talk to you." And then as I was like, "Okay, bye," she was like, "And then the click." We we were <laughs> we tied a bow on it. I can't. I'm not going to wrap the gift and then unwrap the gift and wrap it back. We're wrapping the gift, a tie bow on it, where I'm out. That's what I do, man. Okay, we'll we'll let you go. Don't say we'll let you go and then not let me go. When you say let me go, I go love you by click. And I always say love you. Even outside of family, even to friends, even to you guys. Love you. So that's my take on that. Uh, yeah, I love. Okay, we'll let you go. Okay. Love you, bye. And then she's like, oh, and then one more thing. Oh, I was already halfway clicked. I fully clicked and we're done. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I don't know. I'm just, uh, that's just my thing. Uh, Dating must be tough these days, right? I uh, I got a few messages from you guys like, Trey, how do we slide in DMs? Trey, how do we... You know, I'm dating and corny. What am I supposed to do? I have an idea. I have an idea. I want to do some matchmaking here in Correct Opinion. Okay? I'm here for you guys. Okay? So, boys and girls of age, I guess I should say, I have uh, a really, it's very adorable when I get an email that's like, this is Sarah. Could you please roast? Um, My parents not letting me play Fortnite. I'm 11. I love that. If you are, a, uh, if you are 18 or below, Thank you for listening. That's very adorable. And you are honestly, I like to think my content is very mature, very deep, a lot of layers. So if you're clearly ahead of your time, uh, I am maybe I'm going to do some matchmaking my hope. So if you are, and we'll, you know, tell me, so this, Hey, this is what we'll do. My, the podcast email, correct opinions at Trey correct opinions at treykennedy.com if you're single and you're ready to do some matchmaking via correct opinions trey how will it work let me tell you how it'll work i'm going to try to match i'm going to see if i can match people up we're going to connect you here on the air and we're going to have you're going to have a conversation here at correct opinions i'm thinking of this right now on the fly and it's actually i'm a genius and this is amazing so if you're single and ready to mingle sit Correct opinions at treykennedy.com. Send me an email with your age and your name and just any little thing about you. And then we'll try to get it connected. Okay. We're going to try to do at least one of these. I'll just, I'll uh, call you on my other phone. Sh- shout out Mint Mobile. They've been a sponsor of the podcast. They hooked me up with a, a number. So we're going to use that because I'm about to give you my personal number, but I'll give you my second. Okay. And we'll use that. I'm going to call you here and loop you in. You guys are going to talk and I'm going to step back. I'm going to let you guys do your thing. Match, match, make. I might step in to do a little officiating like, Hey, um, Bradley, like 
be smoother, you know, something like that. But that'll be fun. So please, again, single ready to mingle, send an email to correct opinions at trachina.com with uh, your little dating profile. This will be fun. Oh, please do it, guys. This will be fun. This episode is brought to you by Ember Wave. What is Ember Wave? It is the first bracelet that helps you feel colder or warmer at the press of a button. Wow, this is the lifesaver um, for, and especially, you know, I'm, I'm about to live with a woman. I'm going to marry. I'm too hot. I'm too cold. This could be a game changer. I don't know. Think about it. Ember Lab's mission is to bring them, bring thermal wellness to the world. They're passionate about using temperature to help every person feel better physically and emotionally. Hey, hey, hey. You know, if you're, when we get back to the office, you know, you're always cold, you're always hot. If you're laying in bed, we all, you know, we know what we're talking about. It provides comfort in unpredictable climates, relief from stress and support for sleep. At the end for, at the end of a long day, Ember Wave has a fall asleep mode that can help you maintain a comfortable temperature as you drift off to sleep. It was invented by three MIT scientists and it won the pitch for AARP's Innovation in Aging Award live on Good Morning America. Uh, it was featured on Good Morning America and named Time Magazine's Best Inventions of 2018. So, I mean, come on. And, oh, how does it work? Just by cooling or warming the inside of your wrist, Ember Wave can help you feel better overall. It provides a similar sensation to the refreshing chill of a cold glass of water or the comforting warmth of a hot mug. Makes sense. Makes sense. You guys are smart. So I have an offer for you guys. Uh, to receive $50 off your first order, to receive $50 off your order, head to emberwave.com slash tray. That's E-M-B-R W-A-V-E dot com slash tray. There's no E on the in the end of Ember. Got it? E-M-B-R-W-A-V-E dot com slash tray to receive $50 off your order. This episode is also brought to you by Causebox. I just discovered my new favorite subscription. It's called Causebox, and I need to tell you about it. Causebox is a quarterly, that's four times a year for you <laughs> in layman's terms, subscription box curated by women for women that is filled with all sorts of amazing products and brands that are ethical, sustainable, and have a positive mission to give back and make the world better. Uh, Causebox sent me one of these, so I immediately handed it to Katie. She was like, oh, goodies, and she looked all through it, and there, she immediately was like, do you like them, and put on the earrings. She was using the oils or the lotions that come in it. I mean, uh, there was a cool little like bag with it. It was, it was fun. It was like a little Christmas in a box, and she clearly enjoyed the products. Maybe too much. I was like, calm down. Uh, every cause box is limited edition and comes with six to eight full-size products. You can get everything from skincare and jewelry to homewares and accessories. The last, the last four boxes sold out within days, which is believable when you get over $250 worth of product for only $50. I'm sorry I said product. Product. The best, po- the best part is that, of course... I got my listeners an exclusive discount. Go to causebox.com slash tray and use the code tray to get your first box for 30% off. As in, like I said, the pro- the value is over $250. So now with my code tray at causebox.com slash tray, you can get it for $39 and free shipping. So go to causebox right now. You're going to love it. They ship it to you for free. You just open it yourself, all these goodies. Get it for your mom, your sister, your friend, yourself. Causebox.com slash tray. Okay, someone sent me this. So, of course, it's not playing. Here we go. This song is three and a half minutes long. Really, and shit, how they'll do, make the three because it's almost over. Oh! Rumor has it, uh, this is how the the lead singer Nickelback learned his ABCs. That's how you, you want to show this to your little kid? All right, come here. Hey, Tommy. You need to learn ABCs. I want you to grow up. I want you to grow up to wear cutoffs and have a fish hook on your hat. Okay? Sing along. Yeah. Mm, yeah. A, B, C, D. 
Tommy, listen, listen. I want... You know Daddy likes to go to Walmart. They have better prices. This will help you fit in. Listen, sing along. How is this? Oh, okay, hold on. Oh, we got a chorus of children. Just picturing like Kid Rock, this Kid Rock guy with a host of little kids in the studio. Little alarming. Yeah, kids, kids, you just sing along. I'm just going to hit some runs in the back, man. <laughs> Is this not comedic? Don't forget about And last but not least uh. We're not even halfway through the song We're not even halfway through the song Oh, now it's showing off, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> a, A, B, B, C, C, D, E, 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 F. <laughs> he just made now the alphabet's 69 letters. It's now 103 letters. D, 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 E, 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 F. F. Oh, now we go back a couple E D C B A A A B C B. I made a. It's so funny, because I made a video about this a long time ago. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it. Dude, where is it? Uh, I made a song where I jokingly sang the A B Cs, and it's just coming full circle. And now I can't find it. I can't find my own stuff. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, this might. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. M maybe? No? Dude. Okay, hang in here. Hang in here with me. I just can't believe this is real. Okay, this is so annoying. Now, where is it? I'll find it here. I'll, 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 I'll keep, I'll keep looking, but what? <laughs> okay. This dude's just showing off now. We're going to put, Oh, come on. Play the song. J, J, K, but I'm not just kidding. L, M, M, N, 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 O, O, P, P, Q. This is for, it's like S Nursery Rhymes Volume 10, Songs for Toddlers. Mommy, it's like, say your ABCs, Timmy. We've showed you the song. Tommy, say the ABCs. A, 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 B, B, C, 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 D, D, E, E, F, 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 G, G. It's very confusing for a young boy. There's still a full minute of the song left. What's he going to do next? Double. Double U. I'm going to say it twice because it's a double U. Who actually says double U? How do you spell that? Double U. W. X, X, y, y, Z, Z, Z. Oh my gosh. Key change. Okay, I think I, made, I think I found this video I made a long time ago. Check this out. Um, is this it? Okay, hold on, hold on. Bear with me, people. I can't find anything because I'm an idiot. Because I'm an idiot. Oh, here it is. 
Thank goodness. Teach them the ABCs, huh? Allow me to assist. Oh, don't <laughs> worry about it. I think I got hey! it. Hey! B, C, D, E, F, G. They should have put me on this track, dude. J, K, I just kidding. I'm serious. Oh, let me know. P, 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 Raise your kids to be Creed, Towton, kids who don't know the alphabet. Um, thank you for anyone who sent that in. That was just fantastic. It really was. It really, really was. Um, hope you guys are staying safe, man. Really. Hope you guys are staying safe. Um, thank you guys for all the fun emails. I read all of them. I can't respond to them. Though when people say like, guys, I read all your message. I can't respond to all of them. You can, I can. I just, it would take many hours. And just to be honest, I'm just not going to do that. So I just shoot you guys straight. You know that. Um, I try to send a lot of notes back, but thank you guys are really kind. And I'm loving the podcast more and more. So thank you. Someone sent uh, this in. Trey, I was uh, driving through my hometown and noticed a business called baby bakery. I got so excited and thinking, Ooh, we got a new bakery. <laughs> That's a white girl. Ooh, I'm going to go get a croissant. I'm going to get a croissant. <laughs> at closer inspection, I realized this was not a bakery at all. It was a place pregnant woman gets sonogram. Baby bakery. Ew. Why would you name it that? God bless. Baby bakery? That shouldn't be the name. I mean, that's so confusing. Baby bakery. Yeah. We bake babies. Ew. The baby bakery. What if it was an actual bakery? I feel like that'd be weird. Have you been to the baby bakery? What's that? They don't know. They should make really good croissants. Why is it called the baby bakery? I don't know. The baby bakery is where you get sonograms. Um, yeah. What? That's got to be a very confusing business there. Baby bakery. Come in here and get, get, get your oven checked. See if it's baking all right in there. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. <laughs> Me and the wife have been preheating for years. <laughs> so that's what funny, funny white guys. That's something a, a white guy who thinks he's funny would say. <laughs> Don't take any wood nickels. The baby bakery. So stay away from that. Just trying to be helpful. Um, someone. So I've been teasing about how uh, grandmas and grandpas get really, really weird names. Someone sent in this. I just had to read. I just had to, if I can find it. I need a little more organized here. Um, Where'd it go? They sent this. Uh, the name of the grandpa that said someone down the street is named Gahooty and Popples. Okay. <laughs> I'm not making this up. See what I mean? I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Popples, Gahooty, Gahooty, Cootie, Gahooty and Popples. Okay. I'm going to make, I'm going to make my grandpa name right now and they have to say it. Puz. It's going to be PP Bazoink. PP Bazoink. That, you have no choice, young man. PP Bazoink. That's what I want. Just to take them to like, uh, I'm just like this six year old man, take 65, I don't know, however old, taking my kid to the, the playpen. PP Bazoink. PP Bazoink. Look at me. PP Bazoink. PP. GP3 Gpop 3PO and O to the GP3PO GP3 GP3PO C GP3PO GP GP3PO PP Bazoink and Gahooty I'm gonna make them call me Mr. Trey Mr. Trey <laughs> Dude someone an 11 year old emailed me and said Mr. Kennedy I enjoy the podcast what a respectful young man or young lady I forget um, this stuff's real. 
People just making stuff up. I'm GP3PO. You're welcome. And I'd love for y'all to go with that. Wait, someone sent me a photo of a guy they caught who has a 26.2 tattoo on the back of his calf. Now, if you know me and you follow me along for a while, the, uh, you can't, you know, the worst offense is the 13.1 sticker. Okay. Shh. Not that far. I've walked, I mean, your parents have walked that far toting you around Disneyland. Okay. Shut up. 26.2. A little, you know, you know, I got to train for that a little bit, but still nobody cares. But you have a tattoo, dude. You're so proud of 26.2. You had a tattooed. I just can't. On the back of his calf, I zoom in here, 26.2 with a little running figure. On the back of his calf, he can't even see that. He's just walking around with shorts. It's, it's 28 degrees. He's got shorts on. <laughs> I'm tough, man. Check. I mean, obviously, 26.2. <laughs> I can't. Uh, just to people paying to just run around a city, man. That's a, that's one good thing about this virus. The marathons are canceled. I don't I don't see on my timeline. I just want to think, dude. I saw, I saw this one post. Have you seen this guy? Uh, his name's like David Goggins or something like that. Let me see if I yeah. I'm, I'm pulling up this this guy I found on here who. His post, it's just him smiling with his medal, which they give everyone. You know, they act like they got a first place medal. They give them to everyone for participating. That guy over there who, I mean, he, he he's still running. It's taking him nine hours. He's getting the same medal, man. Uh, David, is that, his, is that his name? David Goggins. He's like that dude who's got a huge following because he used to be obese and now he's like shredded and he's like, I... Everyone join me. We're going to run 48 miles in two days. Let's go. You got, it's all mental. And it, that's one thing that pet peeves me is when people are like, wow, man, he went from being morbidly obese to jacked. How inspiring. That makes sense. He's clearly someone who's like all in on something. I'm like, dude, I am so intensely going to eat everything. And then now I'm so intensely going to do the opposite. Or you see people are like, he used to be a drug dealer. And now he's a pastor of a church. That makes sense to me. He used to be so intensely over here. Now he's over here. He's he's intense about something. Why don't you give credit to guys like me? Yeah, he he uh he did like accidentally shoplift a map once and then he returned it. But then all he he'll also like take out his neighbor's trash. So he's you know he's kind of sits more in the middle. Little bad, little good, you know. Those are always bother me. He used to, he was on meth for nine years and now he's a monk. It's like, that makes sense to me. This is a post from a, from a marathon. Send me these two. Cause these are great. If you ever find any, this is a whole, just, you know, it's like, no one cares. 26 miles on the 26th birthday. Check Mark. <laughs> that sounded like a great idea until I hit mile 20 runners. You know what I'm talking about in parentheses, like a little like side note. Only my runners know. Mile 20 was the worst. Aren't I right, runners? Dude! <laughs> oh. And then who... Are the runners looking at this like, yeah, I know, man. That's just so pretentious. Runners, you know what I'm talking about. Only the runners, though. Let me continue. Huge thank yous go out to Jesus, number one. To... For, give, for making me healthy and a stubborn determination to do, parentheses, and enjoy hard things. So again, really stunting all of us. Shout out to God for making me better than you. Got to give credit to him. <laughs> Two, um, my friends who celebrated me so well at the finish line. I'm so thankful for my friends. Dude, if, if, if you're one of my good friends and you're running a marathon, I'm not, I'm not, I'll meet you for brunch after. I'm not going to make you a sign and say, good job, buddy. Okay. You just ran around for a few hours. 
You know, you know, did that me every day from the ages of 11 to 17. Also shout out to everyone back home in my hometown who called and texted and FaceTimed me, making it so special. Who, why is everyone so excited about this? Man. Oh man. I just have no other thoughts on that. Shout out to God for making me better than you. Isn't it great when that happens? Like Michael Jordan, 48 inch vertical. Uh, okay. I think I really were some people today. This quarantine's got me a little, little feisty apparently. Um, <laughs> apparently I don't know what I, I kind of want to roast one more thing before we go is that all right with you guys can I do one more yay nobody cares um I think some I think someone else I mean, well someone asked me about middle school Maddox uh the braces I get that question a lot so we just asked they were eight dollar little pair from Amazon I don't know they they really worked out they look nice don't they um oh a steer Police chase escaped cow through Idaho city. Of course. Um, just driving in Idaho and there's a bull running through the streets. I've never been to Idaho. I'd love to be. There's potatoes and bulls everywhere. Uh, potatoes and beef. Potatoes and beef. Two of my favorite things. Cows and roots. Well, before we wrap up, I recently... So I shared on my do less, God bless Instagram. It was a funny tweet. Just like one of the best things about uh, lockdown is there's no more gender reveals. Isn't that true? Isn't that nice? I saw someone who they're getting a dog and they might throw a gender reveal for their dog. And I just, you know, just pray for that person. Uh, Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, Again, thank you for all the time, taking the time to send these fun notes on the email. It's uh, I love the kind of community we're building here. If you have the time, if you don't mind, give us a five-star review. That really helps uh, us out. Um, or if you ever want to watch this, not just an audio version, there's a video version on my YouTube. Check that out. And uh, yeah, things are good. Things are mo- rocking and rolling. <laughs> um, also, someone asked if sleeping with socks on is okay if they're really fuzzy socks. Um no so again yeah i'm trying to answer all the questions so i hope you guys have a great week um we're gonna do some matchmaking uh you know that's just it's the least i could do right uh and we have a special announcement coming soon i think by next week's podcast i'm gonna have a fun announcement let's get ready for that uh thank you guys appreciate it and uh yeah okay i'll let you go okay love you bye Correct opinion.